Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Azure Seas of an unknown planet. I am their Heizmeister, and this, well, this is a short break from our adventure mode. As you recall, probably, uh, in the last episode we have finally entered a blue portal and uh, prepared for a major rework of our adventure fleet. But before I can do that, um, I have to make some adjustments to my already existing units and um, to uh, basically allow them to be spawned in, in adventure mode as, uh, yeah, as part of our fleet. Now then, that's why I'm here in the designer mode on this well, still unknown planet. Anyway, the thing you see before you here is the pride and joy of my unit roster, the battleship Caledonia. Uh, you won't see much probably because the sun has already set and the day-night cycle here on this um, unknown planet is uh, a bit strange. It's different than meter. Anyway, uh, in the comments a uh, person known as Gilbert Lay asked Caledonia when. Uh, I probably, they probably meant uh, when she will be added to the adventure fleet and I have to answer with yes and no. She will be added but uh, at the same time not the original Caledonia. Because you see, while I would like nothing more than to add this a battleship of mine uh, to the fleet, uh, she is quite costly. Uh, 1.3 million materials uh, is a bit too much, I'm afraid. But yeah, I know, with a lot of firepower uh, comes an equally high cost. And as you've probably guessed from the title, this is today's topic in this little construction episode, and uh, probably the one after that. Today we will be taking this Caledonia class battleship here and try to reduce the cost a bit. Um, we'll go over various systems and see where some materials can be saved, uh, be it either the initial uh, procurement cost uh, in terms of material cost per component or the running costs of this battleship. You know, as uh, various systems on this one require power, and they subsequently require material input as well. Right then. Um, don't mind the strange fleet colors, by the way. I'm just trying out new things. Alright then. With the dawn, let's get into the building. First of all, we'll have a look at uh, the various systems on the Caledonia battleship and how they can be improved in terms of uh, cost. Right then, let's start with the obvious, the main weaponry. As you can see here, these weapons use railgun components um, in an effort to speed up the shell velocity and thus uh, grant this weapon a little bit more firepower. Now, in the past I've been in the process of replacing some uh, railgun components on my fleet by... or railgun assisted weaponry by pure gunpowder assisted weaponry and for a good reason. You see these railgun chargers here, if I would have selected the turret I could actually... Ay, 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 ay. what a noob mistake. Oh, these railgun chargers here cost 400 materials each and as you can see there are a lot of railgun chargers on this turret alone. So. The first area we will have to improve is, of course, the weaponry. Uh, we'll have to find a way to uh, rely more on gunpowder and um, no longer on railguns while achieving the same kind of firepower, if not even more. Let's take a look here. Uh, we need a higher firepower than 405. Okay. Anyway, uh, the next area where I can probably improve this bit is uh, these laser systems here. They feed into the lamps and uh, the close-in defensive systems here, these little 
uh, anti-suicider, anti-nuke lasers, and uh, they are also fairly expensive, uh, especially these pumps here, and they also require a, a quite a bit of power to run. Um, this laser system here requires 30,000 engine power to run in total. That's a lot. That's also why I've installed two um, huge steam engines here on board. And uh, yeah, I think this area can be improved as well. We may have to um, come to terms with a slightly reduced uh, effectiveness of the lamps and these lasers, however. But yeah, uh, then uh, we have this missile silo. And um, I oftentimes ask myself, do I really need that many missiles? Well, if you're coming from the school of uh, there is never enough Dakar, then you would answer, yes, of course, you need this many missiles. But uh, yeah, I think we can cut down on some of them here as well. Um, I plan to at least either remove two silos from this one or reduce the size of these missiles. Yeah, we'll see about that. On another note, something you might not see at first glance um, in terms of uh, reducing the cost of this battleship, uh, these simple weapons here. They cost 1,000 each and uh, 1,500 for the quad-barreled ones. Which might not be that much, but um, keeping the effectiveness of these simple weapons in mind, I may have to uh, replace some of them with other components. Um, I'll see if I can fit something else in there. Uh, if not, then these... Uh, yeah, odd crops here will simply be left barren or maybe carry some detection systems or lamp slots. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, now for the last area uh, of improvement. Uh, that would be... Where is it? Well, you can't unsee it. It is the steam engine here. So, now for the last area of improvement. Uh, can hardly miss it. It is this steam engine here. Um, while these components are not necessarily uh, very expensive for what they um, provide, um, I would like to install a fuel engine here. A very efficient and um, yet uh, very powerful fuel engine. I know, I know, I know. Very efficient and powerful is and a contradiction, but I'll try to strike a balance between those two factors. Uh, yeah, I'll see what I can come up with. And also, as an added bonus, you see here these um, large generators and flywheels um, are here to produce electricity. If I'm not constantly using railgun components, which well, uh, drain electricity from the main batteries, then I won't need these. Um, thus, I have more power at my disposal, but, uh, well, I would have if I weren't stripping them out in favor of fuel engines. Um, yeah, but anyway, these should significantly reduce the running costs of this uh, battleship. Right then, so much for planning phase, uh, let's get into it, shall we? Let's begin first by stripping out the guns. Goodbye guns. You have served me well on this one. I'm afraid your rather expensive nature thanks to railgun components will no longer be needed. I'll keep those turbines though. They're, they're alright, they're quite efficient. Um, especially those huge ones. Uh, they will generate energy and uh, then the energy in those batteries will only be needed for uh, basically the um, main propulsion systems, which is achieved through crank motors and um, uh, yeah, probably something else. I'll see. Maybe as a backup. Okay. Okay. So the guns have been removed from the ship, and as we can see now, uh, <laughs> below one million. There you see the true cost of this armament and uh, yeah we'll have to find something that can fit in there 
and um, deliver a lot of firepower. Maybe even more than the guns that were previously placed there. I think I have something. I have something for that that might very well work. Hmm. There we are. I have uh, well, borrowed some uh, triple barrel guns from a certain project and they seem to fit in there. Oh, famous last words. Um, yeah, looks like it's alright. I can see that I still have a lot of space left. So, one goes here and the other one goes probably somewhere else. Now, I need to keep in mind that now that I have uh, ditched basically a good portion of my Raygun components, I need to make up for this uh, loss in speed with... Oops, let me just... Uh, there we go. I need to make up for this loss in speed with more gunpowder and subsequently more coolers. Which also means that I need a uh, cooling snake that is cleverly placed inside this turret well. And as you can see here, we have a few collision issues, which I have to sort out right now. But these guns already fit in there. Uh, this is a um, combined Tetris of uh, four clip and three clip per autoloader, and should be more than enough to uh, provide an adequate amount of firepower. Rig um, for this, uh, yeah, weaponry. Oh, right then. I am well within a stage of uh, refitting this gun turret now. As you can see here, there is not much space left. Um, I have cleaned out a layer of... <clears throat> I have cleaned out a layer of recoil absorbers. There uh, still was one remaining. And uh, some coolants. And um, I would like to armor up this gun turret. I would like to armor it properly. However, see this um, coolant snake here on the top is preventing me from doing so. So, with a heavy heart, I have to reduce the 8 meter autoloaders to 7 meter autoloaders. Ah, uh, I know, I know. A little bit less firepower than I had hoped, but hey, what can you do? Uh, so, how did I... This is actually quite strange doing that. I have deactivated connection rules for now. Um, this allows me to basically replace all the clips here without uh, having to redo the whole Tetris from scratch. Uh, something I would like to avoid. Okay. Yeah, this is going to take a while. After I've done so, I'll probably see if I can lower this cooling snake and uh, then assign a suitable shell for this weapon so we can see where we are uh, in terms of cooling, reload speed and overall, uh, basically, overall performance of this weapon. I'll be right back. I have assigned all ammo intakes, so... There we go. We have a satisfying reload rate, and as you can see here now with the new shells, 14.4 RPM compared to the... Um, oh, that's, that's your turret, yeah. Compared to the... Oh, where is it? There we go. Oh. Compared to the 10, only 10 on the... Uh, that's <laughs> an expensive color. Hey, I know your rate of fire is superior, but this, this is still no reason to ram the... Uh, uh, anyway. So, the rate of fire is superior. Uh, this is good. This is very good. Let's just put this one out of play. Anything else I can do here? Um, yeah, probably. Now I need to adjust the shell now. Sorry, I'm a bit all over the place. I uh, had, a little, had a little bit of coffee. A bit too much. 
Okay then, this is the shell as it was in the old Caledonia. Uh, still, you can still see the rail draw here and quite the high speed actually. Let's put the rail draw all the way down and we can see that this gunpowder casing is not enough to be, uh, well, to be sufficient. Since this shell is actually meant to go into a 6 meter autoloader, I need to set it up for a 7 meter autoloader. So, to the magazine we go. Uh, where is this ammunition setup thingy? What do you call it? APS customizer. Oh, there it is. I have three shells for the main guns here, each for different targets. And we need the APH E one. There we go. I guess we can probably add four more modules to this one. Let's see how we are with this. And um, yeah, while doing this, I assume that we are going to run into some problems concerning um, maybe three more modules, or, or maybe two, uh, concerning the um, coolant, or the cooldown time. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Seven meter auto loaders. Uh, there's still space for one more module. This could be a an armor piercing head. This is going to be an APHE shell, as it was on the original Caledonia. Ah, there we go. Nice. So, gunpowder casings. Even more gunpowder casings. And let's not forget um, an emergency ejection diffuse. Very important with this one. And uh, then some HE, HE, and there we go. This should be enough. Now, we have significantly, significantly increased our gunpowder portion in this shell. And uh, yeah, let's see how the rate of fire looks now once we have reloaded everything. And I'm especially interested in the coolant. Oh, well, it's still alright. Um, yeah, still better than it was before. And we have also significantly increased our damage potential, I think. Although the shell is a little bit uh, slower than it was before. Let's see. Ah, oh, yeah, it is. Maybe... Maybe I can tinker with it a little bit. Be right back. Right, there we go. You might not see that much here during night, but luckily I have my flashlight on. So, um, I have lowered the gauge from 485 to 460 and thus uh, managed to get a longer shell in there. We are still fine on the cooling department and have even increased our rate of fire all the way to 15 RPM. Yeah. This looks good so far. Now, let me just um, put in some recoil absorbers and add some armor to the storage. And then we have successfully converted a uh, previously railgun powered uh, gun assembly to a much more economical uh, gunpowder based one. We will compare the cost of the two turrets later, of course. And here we are with both battleships on the field. Well, the discount version and the, the original. Now then, we can see here that uh, on the regular Caledonia, uh, we have a firepower of... Uh, we have 41.04 for one turret. Right then. And this is the turret as it is um, installed in the regular Caledonia. And you can see here Let's me just get to the sub-object mode. Yeah, I call it LOL Pen Triple. <coughs> it costs 118,000 and then some. Right. So far, we have quite a price actually for this gun. And here we have the one that is currently mounted in the discount Caledonia. Please notice that I have added a layer of heavy armor to this one. Now, will it be more expensive with this layer of heavy armor? Uh, we'll see. The firepower for certain is uh, a little bit less. Well, you know, I 
do have a higher caliber and it is rail assisted on the original, but that was to be expected. The cost, however, is significantly lower because this one, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, triple main discount Caledonia. There we go. 88,500. So, mm, quite the discount actually. Um, yeah, we have succeeded in making a cheaper memory. Now, next step is to copy this one and paste it into the remaining turret wells. And, uh, <laughs> the first step to success has been made. Right then, all three turrets have been installed and I have managed to lower the cost from the previous iteration of the Caledonia already. It is now uh, almost, well, more than uh, 100,000 materials cheaper. That's something, though its APS firepower has suffered a bit. Hey, that was to be expected. Right then, let's do a test fire of these weapons. They fire faster than the original Caledonia, but each shell does um, less damage than the original. Still, I am quite content with how that turned out. The weapons now are, I think, at a place where they are sufficiently potent. For a discount version of the Caledonia, that is. <laughs> so, next up is something we can do really, really quickly here. We have to reduce the silo number of these missiles by two. And there we have it. If I would have enabled mirror mode, I would have done it already. Eh. Anyway, I know it's it's not much, okay? It's not much by far, but every little bit helps. And uh, I don't like missile spam, to be honest. I don't like it at all. Uh, yeah, let's make it an odd number. I know, I know. The uh, discount version of the Caledonia is going to um, have to... <laughs> make with uh, make do with a lot less firepower than the original but hey nobody said that uh, the discount version would be stronger than the original or did i say that at the beginning of this episode hmm. strange i can't quite remember now must be my imagination right there we go only six missile silos now. Ach, what a shame. Right then, next up is the large steam engine and probably even the battery storage. Um, the battery has served as a well, energy storage for our rail guns um, most of the time and as a backup for our Steam engines, uh, should they be spooling up at the beginning of uh, combat or be under extremely heavy load or even damaged. So where do we have these battery? There we go. I can probably get away with uh, reducing the amount of batteries here by quite a bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, they are expensive as well. Might not know this, uh, notice this at first, but uh, batteries are expensive. And let's divide those two battery packs here. There we go. Okay, just checking if everything is in order and uh, adding a few batteries. Ah, much better. Uh, actually, that's no more space for an air pump in here. So, what's next? Ah, yeah. While we are at the subject of propulsion, uh, let's actually remove this assembly here. Uh, I don't need this steam engine anymore, I think. Um. Oh, God! Ah! Uh. I wanna die. <coughs> yeah, 
Where was I? Um, yeah, I have managed to fit in a, an efficient engine assembly in here. Uh, all derived from uh, something I constructed a while ago, then extended, improved and... Um, yeah, after almost getting lost in this labyrinth of pipes, I am now prepared, at least I think I am, to put this thing here to the test. Um, though I might have to uh, do something about this assembly here. This doesn't look quite right, to be honest. Um, yeah, we might have to make do without this one. Uh, this turbo charger. Right. There's still some space for a... Uh, Radiator, yes, yes. I will continue to improve and refine this design. But, uh, oh, God, I never knew that engine setup would be such a hassle. Seriously. <laughs> uh, anyway, no need to be a drama queen. Okay, and I had to extend the engine room quite a bit as well. Um, yeah. Here are the performance figures of this engine. Uh, it tells me that at 100%, power draw, I get more power, and power per material seems to be alright with 703. At least, I mean, I'm not that experienced it from the depths, but that seems alright for me. Now, oh. right then, um, the next task is probably to put this one to the test, but first we need to check our costs. Uh, yeah, I know these components aren't exactly cheap here, these turbochargers, but we may have to invest a little bit. Um, in doing so, we have actually decreased our running costs quite a bit. Uh, let's say we can spawn in something to fight. Let's turn the discount Caledonia to Invincible and have a crossbones. How about that? Just a few tests. Ah, I see now. The engine power has gone down a bit, and we are probably draining our. Um, yeah, there we go. Once the lamps activates, the engine power has gone, down, has gone down by a lot more. Now I assume that is um, due to the shields activating when an enemy is near. Yeah, I should probably reduce the shield strength on some of these shields to save a little bit more power. Nevertheless, the main guns are working fine, and the Caledonia, or well, the discount Caledonia, is uh, tearing the crossbones apart. As it should. Nice. Um, I have not outfitted those APHE uh, projectiles with a pen depth fuse. And no minor details, I don't need to concern myself with them. Okay. Yeah, but working fine so far. Anyway, let's see our performance figures now. Uh, power, how's it looking? Fuel engine generator is actually highest priority. You can see here the electric engine is helping out as best as it can. And um, yeah, we're consuming a lot of power. Crank motors. I have no idea why I can't set up a priority for these. Who knows? Um, the shield projectors here are draining a lot of power. They have the lowest priority. I think everything is going towards uh, the lamps, I assume. I ran out of fuel. Uh, okay. Um, a major headache, some aspirin, and some time later I have now finally achieved uh, what I wanted to. I have cleared out the second uh, engine room, cleared out the steam engine, and set up the same um, engine assembly as I did in the main engine room, uh, just a little bit more, uh, well, just smaller, actually. Uh, these are the performance figures. Um, they are worse than 
in the other engine room, of course, since, well, this engine is way smaller, but uh, should still be fine. Still acceptable, I guess. Right then, it is time to test this assembly under full load. Oh, and I've also reduced shield power as well. Uh, give me a cross bounce. When will the suffering end? Seriously. Rebuilding engine is uh, not an easy task. As you can see here, we are still draining too much power. Uh, am I supplying materials? No, I'm not. Hmm. Where's the Caledonia getting the materials from? From destroyed blocks. Uh, I assume so. Anyway, you can see here that uh, we are actually alright in terms of power. Uh, let me just... priority is... one fall. Okay, we have here the electric engines. They're using a little bit of material per second. You can see here these uh, secondary engines only create half the amount of power that the primary ones can create since they are way, way shorter. The setup is a little bit different as well. So, um, I guess uh, the next uh, task on our list is to um, slightly decrease the lamps uh, in terms of cost and uh, see how we can save a few materials there. But this will happen in the next episode. Um, yeah, sorry, but <laughs> I'm all done for today. Uh, setting up these fuel engines with all the complicated um, turbocharger stuff uh, was quite something, actually. Um, so, I hope you have enjoyed this first part of uh, the retrofit of the uh, Caledonia battleship into a little bit of a discount <laughs> battleship, to be honest. I am the Heizmeister and uh, I hope I see you again on the Azur Seas of this unknown planet. Take care and goodbye.